The big deal with Bitcoin is that it's trustless and that individuals hold the private keys to wealth. That's a real big, big, big deal. Previously uh, in history, well, well when, when you look at how humans organize themselves in society to define property rights, we have title registries and we've we formed governments and for the most part that's how we administer property rights. And so like who owns the private keys to a car, for example? Well, you got a title and uh, supposedly that's where your private keys, you know, you might be in possession of the private keys at a certain point in time, but it'd be pretty easy to pull you over and for someone else to take control of that car and so they get the private keys. And actually with some of the self-driving cars and like over in the UK, they want to actually uh, have the car manufacturers build in where they can turn the cars off, like remotely. Um, so we're seeing like who controls the private keys to wealth. HSBC, for example, people went in and wanted to withdraw 5,000 pounds of uh, cash over in the UK. And HSBC said, uh, no, like, what are you going to use it for, blah, 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 blah. So we have an example of where somebody has ownership under the current legal system or structure, but someone else holds the private keys, and there's a conflict in how they want those private keys administered. With Bitcoin, you don't have that issue. Like, individuals hold the private keys. Uh, that's one of the reasons I funded Armory, is because we want to make it safe and secure for individuals to hold their private keys. And this new way of administering property rights, I think that's big. And the more that, that we can do to build this space out, uh, I think the better. It, it decentralizes the keys of wealth among uh, everybody who holds them, instead of concentrating those keys of wealth into particular entities, whether it's a uh, title to a piece of real estate. You know, you might have possession of the real estate, but you don't actually hold the private keys. Government right. likely holds the private keys because they've got the army that can come and <laughs> occupy it if they want. Um, and so we're seeing that, you know, we're seeing that with uh, share certificates on stocks, for example. I mean, you might own the shares of stock, but you don't hold the private keys. With Bitcoin, we can decentralize so many of these private keys of wealth. And I think that's really Satoshi's vision, to trustlessly distribute the keys of wealth. We used to have a saying, he, he who has the gold makes the rules. Right. Well, I think increasingly as we move into the information age, we're learning that it's he who holds the private keys <laughs> makes the rules. But if you don't hold your own private keys, like you're at the mercy of somebody else and whether they'll actually, now you've introduced not just exchange rate risk with the price of Bitcoin, but you've introduced performance risk that the person will actually administer those private keys the way you want them to be administered. As long as you can keep your, your, your private keys safe and secure, whether it's an armory or using something like Piper Wallet or bitaddress.org that's on an offline computer, uh, I think that's a big deal because it decentralizes the keys of wealth away from these centralized banks and institutions that we have.